Joshua said to the people of Israel, choose you this day. Not tomorrow. You have to make a decision today whom you will serve. Whom you will serve. Give Elijah another hand tonight. Amen. Amen. First Samuel 17. I'm going to read real quick. Only a few verses here. I exhort you for a moment. Man, 1 Samuel 17, we're going to begin in verse 45. Super familiar portion of Scripture. It says, Then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day, turn to your neighbor and say, This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel." And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword and spear, for with the battle, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hands. He will give you into my hands. Amen. I'm not going to pray for the sake of time, but we see here something, a story we all know about David and Goliath. This is David speaking directly to Goliath. But just to backtrack for a moment, we see that in this point in time that Goliath for 40 days has struck fear into the hearts of Saul's men. For 40 days there was a stalemate. There was no movement in Israel. And I want to draw a parallel to Israel being the people of God in this day and hour. For 40 days, for 40 days, no movement. No one was willing to confront the issue that was standing across the valley. That was defying their God, telling them that their God was not able to deliver them, telling them that they were going to be slaves. That was the deal. That was the deal that... That, that Goliath was making. Listen, if he beats me, we'll be your slaves. But if I beat him, you will be enslaved to us. So what we have here in this portion of Scripture, in this chapter, we have a nation looking for leadership. A nation looking for leadership. They had a king, but they did not have leadership. Hear me tonight. They had a king. But they had no leadership. They had a battle, but they had no warrior. They were looking for a leader. We find that this is a common thread throughout history. People in desperate situations looking for leadership, looking for someone to fight on their behalf, looking for someone to, to take them to places they've never gone before. For 400 years, the children of Israel in Egyptian bondage uh, cried out to God saying, Who will lead us out of this mess? We find even in this nation uh, that we call home in America that there was, there was multiple meetings and multiple uh, discussions in the Second Continental Congress and First Continental Congress uh, about who was going to lead this army against Against Great Britain, there has always been a cry from people in desperate situations for leadership. The Bible tells us this in Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. And I sought for a man among them that he should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me in the land that I should not destroy it, but I found None. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 6 uh, that, that the Lord asked Isaiah a simple question. He said, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? There's a situation that we find ourselves in in this nation and I'll just be very frank with you tonight uh, that we find that this nation really has no leadership. No one knows who's in charge. I'll just be that frank with you. 
This, this world seems to be in utter chaos. And then out of the midst of this chaos, we hear reports of college campuses erupting into revival. Uh, I want you to know what is taking place is exactly what took place uh, in this passage of Scripture. Uh, there was an absence of leadership, so therefore there was a young generation uh, that stepped to the forefront of a battlefield that was not theirs. Hear me tonight, I'm not here to shame anybody. I, I promise you uh, that we all have a role to play in this. Hear me. Uh, but we find uh, that this nation continues. I heard it today even. Uh, these young people are stupid. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this generation. I heard uh, these men, these men, that they, they would sit and talk. Uh, and they said, look at what this generation is doing uh, on TikTok and on social media. And, and they're acting foolishly. Listen, I know uh, that there, there are many in this generation that does act foolishly. Uh, but I remind you of a story we find in 1 Samuel as well uh, where there were two sons of a priest uh, that were acting foolishly and everybody knew they were corrupt. Uh, everybody knew they were sinners. Uh, everybody knew uh, what they were doing, that they were sleeping around, that they were messing with sacrifices. Uh, but inside that same temple uh, was a boy that no one knew and his name was Samuel. Uh, and he was serving the Lord. Uh, he was serving the man of God. Uh, he was serving the people of God. He was doing what God had called him to do. I want you to know this tonight that this may look bad this generation may to this world seem hopeless but I want you to know there's something going on behind the, the curtain if you will in the church house On and now we see in college campuses there are young people saying listen if nobody will stand up to the giants in our day then we'll stand up. If there's no leader Leadership from the middle age we're going to stand up and we're going to take the leadership role I want you to hear me tonight that I believe we are in a pivotal time uh, listen I'm not attacking any age group because I want you to know that David received an anointing from an elder he received an anointing from an elder. But we see in this passage of scripture that David steps out into the battlefield and he looks at Goliath who for 40 days had caused a stalemate, had caused a fear to come over the people of God. I want you to know there has been such a lack of boldness in the church in America for far too long. There has been a stalemate in the church in America for far too long long. I want you to know that the church has been intimidated for far too long. But out steps a young man that says, listen I will face him and I will not face him with conventional weapons. I want you to know that that is important because in our spiritual lives, the Bible tells us we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principality and darkness. I want you to know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You say, what does that have to do with anything? David steps out there and he says, you come at me with the sword. You come at me with a spear. You come out at me with a shield. But I come at you in the name of the Lord of hosts. What he's saying is your physical attacks will not stop what God is going to do this day. I want you to know what hell has thrown at you. What this world has thrown at our children. I want you to know tonight that conventional weapons will not work against this house. Against houses of worship that that are praying and seeking the face of God. What David was saying is I'm not going to beat you with another sword. I'm not going to beat you with a shield. I'm going to beat you with the anointing that is on my life. But here's the thing. How does he have anointing? It wasn't just because someone laid hands on him. That was the sign. That was a physical sign of anointing being placed on him. But I want you to know what made him eligible for the anointing is that he he had a relationship with the Lord. He was intimate with the Lord out in that shepherd's field feeding his father's flock. He spent time with the Lord. This is what the Lord said after Saul disobeyed. He said this, I'm looking for someone who has my heart. If you want the anointing to face the enemy and the adversary that you're going to face in this day, I want you to know that you're going to have to have the anointing 
anointing. And to have the anointing, you're going to have to have God's heart. David steps out there. David steps out there. He says, hear me. I'm not coming at you with another sword and another shield and another spear. They've tried to give me all that stuff. Hear me today, I find it fascinating that Saul was so adamant that he wore his armor. I want you to know that we in the church have been doing the same thing in the church as we've been trying to equip a generation for what is to come with physical means. Listen, I'll tell you, grades are not going to get it. I think your kids should strive to get good grades. Don't get me wrong. I think athletics are good. I think all, there's things in life that are good. But I'll tell you like Paul told people. He said, listen, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable for me. I want you to know that your, your child uh, getting a scholarship isn't going to set their life on the straight and narrow. I want you to know that your kid uh, winning a, an award uh, is not going to fix their life. Uh, it's not going to give them joy uh, because what happens when they hit the real world uh, and they have to provide for a family uh, but their identity is in a sport uh, or their identity is in a school uh, or their identity uh, is unknown because they don't really know who they are. They've never been. And I want you to know uh, that David said, listen, I can't give Use this stuff. Uh, this stuff will not help me. Uh, I want you to get this in your spirit tonight. Uh, what we've been giving them will not help them. Uh, but if we would give them as Samuel did. Uh, say here there's an anointing for your life. Uh, there's a call of God on your life. Uh, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, I'm going to war for you. Uh, I'm going to bless you. Uh, I'm going to speak highly of you. Uh, I'm going to encourage you. Uh, I want you to hear this tonight. Uh, that things will change uh, when we give a generation. Not what we think they need, but what the Holy Spirit desires for them to have. And come to the music tonight. I'm almost done. But we see as this story develops through 1 Samuel 16, 1 Samuel 17, he receives an anointing. Because he has relationship. And I want you to know what's going on in this nation right now. You, 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 you hear the testimonies coming out of college campuses and things like that. And as Brother Elijah talked, is, is God is requiring more of them. And they're telling people that. God is trying to draw us closer to him. Because remember like I told you Sunday morning. We love the cross, right? But if you don't have the vertical part right, you'll never have the horizontal part right. What's the horizontal part right? It's to reach. It's to touch people. Hear me tonight. There are people in this room that have such an anointing on their lives. And you wonder and you pray, why God? You have my heart, you can have my anointing. That's what he said. I, David is a man after my own heart. He's a man that loves me. Was David perfect? No. But even in his mistakes, he had such a heart after God that he would repent and say, God, forgive me. So we see that David has an anointing through relationship. We see that David will not use conventional weapons. I could preach a message on that right now. I really could. Because he looked at Saul and he said, these things are not proved to me. I'm not used to these things. But David steps out there in our text. He says, listen, I come at you in the name of the Lord of hosts. He said, we're going to have victory. And he even says in verse 47, they're going to know that it's not by the sword and it's not, not by the spear. Doesn't that sound like another portion of scripture when you read it slow like that? It's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit. 
says the Lord, what God's doing in this nation, it's not because of anything we've done in our flesh. Hear me tonight. I believe that, again, I want to make it clear. I'm not trying to belittle the middle age. I, listen, we love the Lord. My children can see me put Christ first. David steps out into the middle of the battlefield. He makes that declaration. The Bible says a little more dialogue that goes back and forth. But the battle commences. I've never really heard people preach on this, but the Bible says that David ran towards Goliath. A lot of people betray it as he just got the stone, put it in his sling, and he stood there. But the type of sling that he slung was was not something you could just stand there. It helped to have the momentum. And he ran towards Goliath. As I alluded to earlier, I want you to know the reason that you're seeing this happen in young adults and young people doesn't mean that it can't happen in any other age group. But while you're, while you're seeing the, the limelight, if you will, for lack of a better term on them, because I believe that there have been young people that have not been seen, as I said earlier. They've been sitting in church pews. They've been learning from their pastor, learning from their parents, learning from, from their grandmas and grandpas. And the world's not talking about them. They're talking about all the bad. But there's some young people in prayer and in worship and in supplication to God have run towards the thing that has been holding back the church. The Bible says he hits Goliath and between the eyes and the head he falls over. David, having no sword, takes Goliath's sword, cuts off his head. But here's here's the main point. Here's what I want you to understand. This is the title. I've waited till the end to give you my title. Is there is a giant falling. You say, what are you talking? Understand this. Brother Wade, when he decapitated Goliath... The Bible says that the, in verse 52 that the Philistines began to run away. But behind David was the camp of Israel, the people of God. And out of the camp of Israel, it says that they shouted and they advanced. What I'm telling you tonight is because of what is going on. This is what I feel in my spirit so strong. Because of what is going on on these college campuses and in these church houses across this nation. I want you to know there is a giant falling. And it is releasing the church to shout again with a shout of triumph. And that we are not going to sit on the sidelines anymore. We're not going to be intimidated anymore. But we're going to advance. We're going to take back territory. We're going to take back lost loved ones. We're going to take back cities. We're going to take back schools with the anointing and the power of Jesus Christ. Hear me tonight. 
And what Brother Elijah spoke in verse 17, uh, he says, I'll give you blessings. Uh, I'll multiply you. Uh, why? To, so you can take uh, the gates uh, of your enemies. Church, we're on offense for the first time in decades. Get the ball. Run. You hear me? Run. Pray. Fast. Worship. Dedicate yourself to God. Find yourself alone like David did and you'll find yourself getting an anointing that you've never known. There's a giant falling and the church is advancing. So who's with me? Who wants it? Who's hungry? Who's thirsty? Who's desperate? I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a leader. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. You can follow me. You can follow me. I'm a leader. I want you to begin just to praise the Lord. Just begin to praise the Lord. Just begin to pray. If you feel the utterance of speaking a heavenly tongue, you speak in a heavenly tongue. There is a giant falling. There is a generation rising. And there is an open door being presented to the people of God. Oh God, I come against every principality and power. I come against every demonic thing that would love to launch itself against the church. But Jesus, I thank you that we have victory in your blood. We have victory through your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. There is a giant falling. Lord, everybody, Pastor Ron coming to you again. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that the word was a blessing to you. And today, before we say goodbye, I just want to encourage you, if you have not yet put your faith and trust in the Lord, that this would be a time that you would do so. I'd also say to you, if you're going through a very difficult or trying season, know this, God is faithful. He loves you. We love you. And we just say to you today that He is still able to do exceedingly abundantly what we could ever ask or think. So I speak blessings over you and your family. Thank you for joining us today.